Uh, we have a 4K BenQ to look at today. This was sent in by a customer from my day job who purchased a replacement lamp assembly, put it in, and uh, I think they said they heard a pop and then some smelled some smoke. The old one apparently had ruptured, so my guess is we're going to find something related to the original ruptured lamp assembly. Um, this is uh, an HT, there we go, it's an HT2250 from September 2017. Kizda Optronics, that's who makes BenQ. The lamp assembly is a 5J JHN05001. UHP 240 170 0.8 E 20.7. I don't know what fusion air means, but that's good to know, I guess. Oh, there we go. UHP 240 170 E 0.8 E 20.7 fusion air 241. So let's take a uh, look see at what we have in the lamp assembly area. And this came in with the lamp door partly disconnected so we can just pop that off the rest of the way. Alright, there is no lamp assembly in there but I do see glass. Maybe you guys can see there little bits reflecting down here. My guess is a piece went in in that hole right here and got the uh, blower fan to stick but when I reach my finger in there it does feel like it'll turn so I think what we're going to do is we're going to open it up it's got some pry marks in it too it looks like the owner maybe oh I see <laughs> wow the owner beat the snot out of this thing they definitely didn't check the manual Um, the manual shows that to get this apart, you, wow, yeah, you loosen these up. They actually rip the door apart. Check the manual, people. It's not that hard. See, they ripped that insert clean out. And then they broke the other tab. Look, I can't believe they didn't check the manual. I mean, it says in the manual to loosen those screws up. There's one screw, and then there's the insert they ripped out. That's supposed to be in there. We'll, we'll glue and clamp that, so that'll be okay. And then the other side, the uh, plastic piece broke off. They broke that off of the door. That is supposed to go here. If the plastic isn't too stretched and warped, I will see if I can fix that too. Let's see, that's supposed to bend. So I'll just take that off. Maybe I'll epoxy instead of um, CA glue it, you know, JB weld or something. What I'll probably do is CA glue it to hold it, get it in position, and then I'll use epoxy or something to uh, reinforce it. Because I guarantee you if I CA glue it, that will not be strong enough for the long term. But that's where that goes right there. So let's put that back in there. And then this was supposed to go in there. Man, they just mangled this poor thing. It's not easy to get that top off, but it's not bad if you don't smash the case. I don't know how they did that. That screw comes out. No other screws on the top. And we have a bunch of screws in the bottom. So this thing, I'm going to have to really check into it because after seeing that cover, it makes me a little concerned about how they treated the rest of it. 
I mean, seriously, people, check the manual. It's not hard. And it can really save you a lot of hassle. I'd be willing to bet all this was probably caused by them not installing the uh, lamp assembly correctly. All right, now let's see if we can get this top off now that I got those screws out. How does it feel? It's going to move a little bit. Just make sure that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. All right, I got them all out. Or it looks like I got them all out. Although looking at how the customer treated this, would it really matter? <laughs> Just kidding. Of course it matters. All right, let's uh, let's actually pump the pop this front cover off first. It kind of seems like that might need to come off. Let's see, is that clip loose? off this thing gets in the way. Alright, so it's something on the end holding it. So I think instead what we'll do is we'll just pop these side clips off. I don't think these have to come out to get the back off, but let's see, let's pop. Can I get that to pop loose? Maybe not. Maybe they do have to come out. Let's just take them out and be safe. Because I may have to take the main board out anyway. Really not sure what I have to take apart here. I've never opened one of these up before. HT2250. Sometimes the plastic will go underneath these little fastener fellows and hold the top in place. So just to be safe, let's take them out so that we don't end up with a repeat of the snapped um, insert for the lamp door. There we go. That one, yeah, that's it's not going under there. I could have left them in, but that's all right. Better to err on the side of caution instead of making extra plastic pieces. All right, what do we got now? Let's see. There we go. Okay, that's actually not at all bad to take apart. So it was just those screws I took out, and then you just give the top a little little pull, and then that should pop loose. There's the buttons and the light pipes. Let's keep all that there. And you can see where the clips are. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you got four per side. We have one screw in the back, and then we have one, two, three, four screws through the bottom, and then one through the top. Right here, I may glue that or epoxy that. We'll see. But for now, I'm just going to set it out of the way. But point it at me so that I can see what button is what. And here we go, and here's the insides. It's uh, very similar to the old W1070. Uh, but definitely with some newer newer options. Somebody was in here. This was moved. That's bent. This is bent. So it looks like he may have been in here. Yeah, look, that was all bent funny. Yeah, somebody was in here and they made a bit of a mess out of things. But that's okay. Like I said, we'll figure it out. 
but I should probably tear this down the rest of the way just to make sure they didn't do something else wrong. Unfortunately, this is going to cost them a little bit extra because when it's um, a repair through my day job, I have to charge labor hours. Yes, I don't think that's supposed to, well, maybe, I don't know. But I have to charge for all work when I do stuff on the side, you know, from a YouTube viewer. I have uh, a bit more leeway in the uh, discount area because I'm going to make a, hopefully, make a few bucks off the videos. These videos don't make a whole lot. On average, after about a year, I might make about 40 bucks on a video. Some of them make more, but that's about average. They don't make a whole lot. My channel's not exactly uh, a huge income channel. Surprise, surprise, being a, a very niche topic that it is. But that's fine. I don't do this for the money. If I did this for the money, I'd actually charge people what I should when I do side work instead of just asking them to donate to that charity that I like to do volunteer for, volunteering for. So anyway, let's see, unplug that, 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 let's get this screw out, let's see that's all the screws, let's see, now I should be able to, there we go, unplug that fan, and then the low voltage. Oof, yeah, that's got to be cleaned off, that heat pad. What in the world? Okay. I don't know what that's about. I think I might need to have a conversation with the uh, owner first before I go too far. Then we have, I guess this is the formatter board maybe, because we have the color wheel plugged into it, the color wheel sensor. Also, I'm pretty sure this is the pixel shift control for the uh, 4K. Let's see, what's holding that in? Can I take that? Out? I think we can. I want to get this metal structure out. So I guess all of these have to come out, maybe. Can't see down there. I was trying to. Usually there's like uh, screws that you can get to to take all this stuff out, but it must all be under this main board. For those guys, those are motor control chips, I'm pretty sure. They got those heat sink pads there. Let's see. Will this come out? Do I have to take that? Let's get the ballast control unplugged. Okay. So this one does have to come out. I was kind of hoping it didn't. But and it kind of makes sense. Then the screws for holding that metal substructure should come out next. Oh yeah, all right. So here is the. Oh, this actually drives the DMD. Okay. W seventeen hundred. So we have two DMD drivers. They must be doing half the screen. And some RAM. Power. Wish they'd tell us what this board was called. I'm going to call it the formatter. But maybe it's the scaler. I'm not sure. But it fits together with the, uh, with the other board. Like 
that and then that plugs into the DMD riser so we'll keep those together for now and so I don't get this fastener mixed up and where it goes I'm actually just gonna half start it just so it's where I need it to be then I can see the screws that hold the metal frame in. Let's get them out. Come on. Because the, uh, the owner did say that they smelled smoke. So we're going to check the power supply and ballast. Come on. Is that enough? Uh, one more. Down here. That should do it. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's set that out here. And here's the power supply. There's the ballast. It's one of those uh, mini ballasts. It's kind of cool. So I'm looking for the usual stuff, which is. bad MOV or bad uh, thermistors and they look okay. I don't see any burn marks, no obvious burn marks. Let's uh, unplug the ballast lamp wire and let's get that mini ballast out so that we can remove the power supply and check that. If the power supply and the MOSFETs on the ballast check out then we will, oops sorry, then we'll go ahead and reassemble it enough to try it. Come on. There we go. So there's the mini mini ballast I call it. Oh, it's a super value. A super value slim. 2012, huh? Wow. It's crazy. And there's the uh, actual part number stuff if you needed to get one for your W1700 or your HD2250. That's the stuff you need. So we're going to check these MOSFETs, make sure they're okay, and we'll check that diode and that MOSFET and make sure it's okay. And if that stuff checks out, this should be fine. And then we'll... Come on, power supply. Come on up and out these wires untangled. Let's get that door switch. Oh no, it's a thermal thermal fuse or thermal breaker. Man, that is giving me a hard time. Let's see why. Looks like the lamp basket, this thing, was causing it. What's holding? Oh, this one. Okay. No, oh, come on, come back. All right, so now this should be, yeah, there we go.
Here's the optic assembly. Nice looking. All right, set that off to the side. I think that fan might need a little, little attention, huh? Not too bad, but definitely needs some attention. All right, so then the screw, and then the fan comes out, then the basket comes out. And the power supply comes out. There we go. So, wow. So to get the power supply out, all of that stuff has to come out. And, and this is what we're left with. But this makes blowing this out with air a lot easier. So while everything is inside, it's kind of lined up like this. Yeah, basically like that, without the main board and the frame and everything. So what we're going to check, we'll clean that. We'll check this and clean the color wheel sensor. We'll get the rest of the uh, glass and crud out of that. I think definitely overheated. And then this fan, uh, here's what the cause. This fan's just got a lot of like hair and dirt stuck in it. So that's what we need to clean up. So how does that, that just comes off, right? Yeah, that's just snapped on there. So we'll set that over there. I don't really need to take this apart. I can just hit it with the uh, paintbrush to loosen everything up and then we'll hit it with air. Get that, we're really just gonna, gonna get in here with the brush and all I'm doing is knocking stuff loose and then the same thing on the bottom side and then go hit it with air very easy so after I got all that stuff loose I just hit it with some air and uh, a huge huge puff of dust came out so that's good oh let's put Let's put the vent back on. Like that, that goes there. And then that'll go back into the projector. Okay, there you go, you guys can see it. All right, let's check the uh, MOSFETs first. So, they're probably in channel. So that means I'll go from gate to source, gate to drain, was I, wait a minute, okay that's, oh that's why I was must have been tapping that with my probe, alright that's what I want to see, I think we should see the, yep there's the uh, flyback diode, so that's good. So that looks to be what we're looking for. Make sure there's no short circuit and doesn't seem like it. No, those are good. Those are good. And then let's check the uh, diode. That's good. And then the input switching MOSFET. It's good too. So they're all checked. I'm happy with that. I suspect this will be fine too. I don't think we're going to find any real problems. Let's start with the fuse. F601. Good. And bridge rectifier is here. Let's see. All right, that's good. And good. Good. 
right, they seem fine. This all seems fine. I think the main problem was the um, the fan being clogged. Let's just check these uh, diodes real quick. They should be fine. Because if there was any problems with the power factor correction circuit or something like that, it would be very obvious. Very, very obvious. Oh, there's one more. I don't know if this is a chip or a transistor. But either way, it's not shorted, and that's what matters. And then, low voltage. Come on, there we go. That one's good, too. Yeah, I don't... I don't think anything's wrong with the power supply. So I'm sure we'll be all right. That's gonna go back on. There we are. So this will go back in too. Get that out of the way here. And then let's see, let's, let's give these fans, let's give these fans a clean. All right, and these are sun on. This is an MF92251V3, 1D010G99. All right, so if you need a, a fan, that'll give you the part number. You need to use the exact part number. You can't use one just because it's the same voltage and current. The uh, stall reporting or error reporting is critical. If it doesn't have the the correct stall reporting, then um, it won't work right. Could make your projector just throw errors. This one's actually not too bad. I definitely see stuff on the edges of the blades. But we'll get all that off. There we go. cleaned up. See the way all that down here that that's from heat hitting that and it looks that white that you're seeing is actually glass fiber that kind of floated to the surface. This is uh, glass fiber reinforced plastic. Yeah there we go. PPS GF40 40% 40 glass fiber reinforced 17, 10, 2, 6. So, October 26 of 2017, this was molded. All right, so that's good, that's good, that's good. Let's look at the optic module and let's get that heat sink wiped out. I thought about pulling the... Uh, heat sink off the back to get... Oh! <laughs> okay. I think we will pull that back off. I just realized that there is a missing fastener. Somebody... Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, we're taking that apart. <laughs> Somebody... Wow. Wow, yeah, oh boy. It looks like they may have damaged the carrier. This piece is so critical. If you bend any of those little tabs, any of those are bent, this thing's done. Now, luckily, they're available, but you know, <laughs> don't mess them up. All right, there's the DMD. It's going to need new heat sink paste anyway. All right, so it is a 1910-513AB. And I'll put that in the description, actually. Hmm... Hmm. 
Hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to see what I can do with that. Let me think about it. I'll be back. What a mess. So they broke off this whole fastener setup like we saw. So I was able to drill and kind of tap out that hole. It wasn't easy. Um, but I did get it cleaned up. The um, metal had broken off inside. A piece of screw was just snapped off in there. And it's going into like a magnesium pot metal thing. And these screws are made out of some kind of pot metal themselves. So it was uh, not easy. Stuff wanted to crumble the whole time. So what I ended up doing was not putting... A primary fastener underneath just for that hole the other three have them so the heat sinks spaced properly but I needed something pulling in on that side to make sure the heat sink was getting enough pressure on the back of the DMD so that it has good heat transfer you can see under there what I did you can see where they go in so I am okay with this you can see I got a spring under it it's doing what it's supposed to. It feels good. It looks good. You know, it's not out of the way. It's all right. All of these are in all the way as they should be. Yeah. So we're going to call that good. The uh, color wheel sensor, I blew some air up in there so that's all nice and clean hanging on it but this could have been a real uh, real problem but I think we're okay there I'm happier with that I apologize for not showing that whole process but truth be told I really wasn't quite sure which direction I was going to go and I had to try a few things and I'm also at work so I had to kind of move along with it so the short version of what I did is I marked the depth of the hole you know how far the screw should go in and then I just very slowly and carefully drilled it out um, I actually tried cutting a, a, cr a line or a slot across it first see if I could get a uh, screwdriver in there to take it out but I just kept breaking it so I just drilled it out and tapped it and there we go so that's the solution for that and further reassembly we have the ballast mainboard basket optic assembly set back in place I apologize I forgot to um, turn the camera on a few times I thought I had turned it on but I didn't so bear with me you didn't really miss anything I just you know laid stuff back in it wasn't anything special so now I'm putting the, um, the screws that hold the optic assembly back in these are the helical so I definitely am being careful as to not cut new threads. So I turn them back a little bit. Come on. Oops. There we go. Ah, oh, crap. That one. So those are snug. That's all in. Now we have to put this in. This is that uh, metal frame that will hold the main board and everything. Just get the extra wires out of the way. And when we slide this in, we have to make sure that these line up with their spots and that this goes around the AC plug and that this gets around the uh, optic module. So there's a handful of things that all have to line up at the same time.
let's get one of these in. There we go. And we'll get these side pieces in. Pretty sure it takes this screw because there are brass threads I see. Can you guys see in there? Hopefully. Hopefully the lighting's good enough. Okay, and then oh. Almost put the wrong kind of screw in there. It also takes a helical. Now we'll put the uh, lower section of the main board in. I'm actually going to shift This little cooling pad just a little bit over because I want it to get a really good contact on those chips and just wipe it off a little too. It's got a little bit of dust on it. So that will sit here. Moved it over so that way it presses on those two control chips a little better as motor control chips and then take this fastener out all right so that's plugged into the dmd and let's put that fastener back in See, can I get to use that screwdriver to get it going? Yeah. is going to get a longer screw. There's two different sizes of these big, uh, these like wide, I don't know what you call these, washer screws, pan head screws. But there's two sizes. There's a long one that I just showed you. And then there are two, at least two, possibly more, short ones. And here they are side by side. You can see that one on the right on the screwdriver is much shorter. And what that's for, that's to actually hold this board to the DMD. That's what this is all about right here. If you mix those up and put the long ones in, you could cause problems. So try not to do that if you can help it. All right, so let's see here. This sensor, that's the color wheel sensor wire that goes there. We have the color wheel wire that goes here.
make sure there's no other shorties. It doesn't look like it. So that means this one. Let's see, does that good? Probably gets this screw. Yeah, that looks good. Let's see, we do have a screw here, but I don't remember. Hmm. Actually, let's loosen these a teeny bit. All of these. Make sure that's all lined up right. See, that's going to go here. So that means everything else we're looking at should should be okay. Let's see how these longer screws do cuz that looks like that's where these go. Then, oh, I'm going to have to take a couple of those out. Yeah, I'll have to take that one and this one out. For, I knew I forgot something. I was like, I remember something else being here. Then I will put this in. I believe this wire is the um, the actuator or the solenoid, the, the pixel shift motor, whatever you want to call it. That's what shifts everything around for the 4K. So you make sure that's in. This other stuff we can ignore because everything else should be plugging into the top board. Top board is right here. Let's move this back through. All right. Voltage is plugged in. Gonna snap that in over here. After we line up our back connectors. Does this go? And that's going to go all the way over here, but we'll hold off on that one. Let's go. All right, let's. I need to pop this back off momentarily, just for a short, a short moment while we plug the ballast control in. Yeah, under here. I'll show you. Right here. Uh. 
then we'll put this screw back in with the ground wire for the shield for the ballast. Okay, that's good. Now, let's plug this back in. Alright, that fan goes here. Speaker, we'll plug that in. We may have to unplug that to get it back into position once we put this on. But for now, we'll plug that in. Then the other fan, the exhaust fan, air goes out. Okay. Tuck that down there. Okay, this is about ready to test. All right, one last thing. Before we test it, I'm going to temporarily put one screw here without the uh, cover on that metal piece, uh, just so I can keep an eye on everything. So let's get the lamp assembly, pop that in, figure out how we're gonna hold that door switch down and we'll go from there. All right, so we have a 5J, JHN05001. That has a Phillips slash signify UHP bear hold inside. You can see it's got the Phillips Then that little pin that sits in that hole, we got our screw, we have our proper UVIR cut filter. So let's set this in. That feels good. Snug that down, not tight, just snug. And then plug this in. And then to hold that door switch down, can I use tape? Or a weight maybe? Or I can pinch it. Hmm. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I figured a little method out I'm going to try. I'm going to use the tweezers, because they're plastic, to hold it. But to hold the tweezers together, I'm going to use that clip. Maybe I need something a little lighter. This is kind of heavy. Let's try. The tweezers will work, but the holding the tweezers closed part did not work. So maybe we'll try. Let's try a crock clip and see how that does. Just get that little piece of wire off. All right. So 
I'll just gently spread that and then slide it on and that'll hold it. All right, let's uh, let's plug it in. See what? It All right. All right, no booms, good. Or pops or any bad noises. We have a green light under power. Oh, and it's just coming on. Let's see. We get a light. Color wheels on. Let's see if we get anything on the screen. Nothing yet. No picture yet. Oh, there it is. BenQ. There we are. Let's see auto source searching. Let's see menu. Yeah, there's the menu. Menu. I'm looking for the uh, lamp info. Ah, oh, lamp settings. 712 hours. Wow, so it only had 1400 hours on the old one before it exploded. So now we need to reset that. So, oops, let's go back. We'll go to menu, lamp settings, reset lamp timer, reset, reset successful. So we have a good picture here. That's really good. Let's shut it down, let's get the top back on, and then we'll bring it to the other side and cook it. There, it's unplugged. The uh, fans are stopped. Let's drain all the power. Come on. Those capacitors really hold a charge. It's not plugged in, see? But we still have LEDs. That's those capacitors. Come on, let's go, fade out. Oh well, well, let's move along. So, while those are draining the capacitors, let's get that screw out, because that is in the way. And then we're going to put this frame back on. It's a little bent up, but I'm going to see if I can form it back on there correctly. Oops, didn't mean to do that. That's okay. I disconnected it off of the uh, thing, but we're good. Let's move those wires over. So I do it this way so that I can get on that spot right there. And then all of these metal tabs need to be on the outside of the assembly. These guys need to stay on the outside. All right. So let's get one in. Let's get these two. Let's see that one. these wire straps that have to go back on. I'm going to try and flatten them so that we can put them in the right spot. 
believe we're going to need one here. Take that back out and put one there. And then there are two more. Now I saw where they were when it came apart, but those I do not believe were the right places. So I'm going to use a little bit of, I don't know, creative, I don't know, creative something or other to know where these go. Uh, down there probably there was one. Yeah, let's do that. So this is going to slide out. And then we'll take... that out. And then we'll put... come on. Then I have a shorty. That guy. That one I'm pretty sure goes right here. Because I don't want to hit the PCB. Then this one. Then under here, that one has a washer affixed to it. And that's a holdover from the uh, W1070 series. They all use that same kind of screw and washer there. There we go. All right, that all looks good. Let's put this faster, this uh, wire clip thing over here. hold that down there and then you know I wonder this one I wonder if that actually goes under here and helps hold that stuff down because usually on these there's a uh, plastic clip to push all that stuff under let's see how it does with one of those if that fits or not because if it does which it is. This is a good way to keep that color wheel and stuff from getting in the way. We'll just do that. I think that's what I'll do.
Yeah, I like that. Even if it's not how it came out from the factory, I didn't see it, of course. But I think I'm happy with that. Oh, let's redress that speaker wire. All right, that will work with. I'm good with that. Let's see, and we got a bunch of screws that go in the back and top. So let's get that top back on. Let's get this on, and then we can put some other screws in and then start testing it. door. I still have to fix that broken plastic on the door, but let's put these screws back in the bottom. So I think I'll do these by hand. This shouldn't be too big a deal. Too big of a deal. There we are. Well, somebody was looking for extra screw holes. I know what that is. I wish they would have checked the manual about that door. Good. Then we have one more in the top. Yeah. And then we just have the side screws. No extra screws. Gotta love it. So there we go. That's all that's left. We have the screws for the door, they go on the sides, and then uh, that plastic piece that I have to put back on. But for testing, let's just do this. Oh, and this pushes down on the switch. What a bad design. Not a good design. I'm a little surprised at PenQ, to be perfectly honest. Snap back down all the way. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's go meet up at the other spot and see what this looks like on the 
a big screen with a uh, the signal hooked up to it. I don't have a 4K signal source with me at the moment, but maybe I'll do some editing magic and we will. We'll see. All right. See you guys in a moment. And we have it on the uh, Raspberry Pi. It is doing uh, 4K. Let's see if I can get a full 4K picture here. I don't know if the Raspberry Pis can uh, handle the output. Maybe I need a new driver. Let's see. Okay, so I think it settled out, but you can see it's all jittery. I don't think that, yeah, that video chip is crazy hot, but whatever, that's not why we're here. We're looking at the picture for this BenQ, so the picture looks great when it works. If the Pi can keep up, I might have to put a fan on that, but the picture looks good. The BenQ looks good. I went and checked the uh, menu. I actually ran it on um, 1080 for a bit just to cook it because I wanted to make sure that it would run for at least an hour and it did so we're good there. So if you have a question about your BenQ 4K DLP projector um, HT2550 or W1700 go ahead and stick it down in the uh, comment section there I'll have a link to a replacement projector lamp in the description along with a coupon code so let me know if uh, you have any questions and as always thank you for watching.